was the social center of, or the casino rather, and what kinds of activities did they do? What was a typical day like? Well, the typical day called for people to go to the beach to bathe, as they put it. Mm -hmm. It was good, that was healthy. Because yeah. I remember my mother saying 11 o'clock was the proper bathing hour or whatever. Right. <laughs> what did they do, bathe for one hour? They would bathe for an hour or so, and, and then, then they would uh, come to the casino, the towers, and they would, uh, they would be, have lunch. And Which was really sort of a dinner, as by our standards. Right. Yeah, they call it a dinner. Mm -hmm. Supper was at night, as mm -hmm. I remember. Now you have to let people know that the casino as, as they knew it is different from what we think of as a casino today. Yeah, the word casino is, comes from the uh, Italian. It was, a, it was usually spelled with two S's. Monte Casino, people may know. And it was a place, a summer house or a place for diversion or recreation. And it could be a room or it could be an establishment. Mm -hmm. And it could include gambling, but it, its basic purpose wasn't, mm -hmm. wasn't gambling. Whereas today, it, it's basically you think gambling when now you think it's, Now you know, it's a gambling. Mm -hmm. Different But the towers had shops and restaurants and uh, a telegraph room, didn't it? Yes, yeah, telegraph room. So this was the office or something. I'm sure they all had high shoes that I'm held. I thought you'd get used to it, but. It is finery. They must have had to take some time to go home from the beach and then change into these beautiful outfits that no. they wore. And also, there were tennis courts here. Yeah. It burned here. Everything burned in Narragansett, but no, Newport no. didn't have too many fires. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. well, we had a, speaking of burning, in a, a moment that was called the blackest day in the history of the pier. This was September 12, 2000. We had this big event that Kate talked about with a tent and all. And it, so the newspapers gave us great coverage. And Which is where the Narragansett Post Office is yes. now. Yeah. yeah. And it, the whole center of town burned, burned down, including the casino. What, what date was that? September 12, September. 1900. So was that still the season, or had people left? Uh, or? It was j just at the end of the yeah, season. Yeah. A lot of these wealthy people who came here would uh, go off to another resort or go to Europe or, or something like that, but they, they tended to stay a little later than mm -hmm. people. They would come and they would stay the whole summer from June, July, and August. Right. And people can't do that anymore. Right? No. <laughs> We'd love to do that. <laughs> the income tax was much no, more. Yeah, that would be so nice. <laughs> so let's get back just a minute to the, to the fire because that's such a, a big uh, point and uh, such a, a terrible tragedy that happened in this town. Tell us a little bit more about the blackest day in history. Well, the fire started in the, uh, we have some pictures. The fire started in the roof of So it was a windy day, and were, did people die in the fire? Or? Nobody died, but the, the wind was from the southwest, and it, it blew, and the, there was a, uh, uh, a uh, merry-go-round up the beach that caught fire. They put that out. One of the bathhouses caught fire. But strangely enough, the uh, casino, which was on the other side, was south of the Fire, caught fire and, and burned. There were, were buildings made out of shingles and wood. And hmm. The only thing left in the very graphic pictures. Of oh, it's all so you people do this as a for fun? Huh? Yeah, fun. Yeah. One constant future. Be <laughs> here doing what she does so well and putting on these events and so forth. So yeah. we're really thankful, and the towers have been used for. Um, 
charity events and uh, all kinds of things to bring the community get together, right, Kate? That's right. We had uh, we rented out the towers. Of course, is owned by the town of Narragansett and run by the towers committee, uh, who helped. Um, get the towers going again about mm -hmm. So it had been sort of um, vacant for a while, the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, not that much going on, a little right. bit of, little bit of roaring stuff. 20s revival, and uh, not used during the Depression, and the 40s and 50s maybe ice cream was sold here, or something like that. And so really it wasn't until you got down to uh, the restoration in the, the late 80s, I suppose, that the tower started coming back to life, so to speak, right? right? It was, it was, uh, the town was auctioned off, uh, the towers was auctioned off in 1963, mm. and then the buyer, who was Judge R. Carroll, was going to sell the uh, building to uh, a group of interested local people, but there was another fire, mm -hmm. 1965, and it burned, uh, burned Now, your the family had something to do with this tower, too, right? Well, my father, it, owned the second casino, which was across the street where the Rockingham had been. And I, I believe he, he ran some functions in the, in the towers as well. Mm -hmm. But the new casino kind of monopolized the business. You know, it was, uh, but in any case, uh, in, in 1965, the town was uh, going to uh, build a, was going to take this over and build their uh, town hall. Oh. And that was one of the theories they had. Then because of the fire and the destruction, they didn't feel they could handle it. 1967, uh, Governor John Chafee uh, developed a scheme where, where he got support, $20,000 from the Narragansett Improvement Association, which are uh, uh, some wealthy summer residents who put up $20,000 and he was able to purchase the towers from a caro for the uh, town with the proviso that the town should uh, repair the building. Uh, so that really saved the towers? That saved well, the towers, yes. yeah. That, mm -hmm. was, that mm -hmm. had a lot to do with, uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, with Governor Chafee's. 1969, it was put on the National Register in historic places. Um, there was some talk about in 1984, they got a big grant and the, the grant was going to uh, permit them to uh, stabilize the place. And there was talk about building a hotel uh, in the old style that would cover the park. You see, that's something I don't understand, and uh, we didn't talk about this at the pre-planning meeting, but if you can't answer it, all right. I don't understand why they don't have a big hotel in the style of the old hotel somewhere around here because I would think that would be just wonderful. There's so few hotels in South County, and I know Anne O'Neill talked about that, too. Yeah. Right. Was there a reason for that? It's too seasonal. Oh, okay. Yeah. In the old days, they were, they, were, they were less expensive. Season was long, and people came, and they had lots of money, and so it made sense. Right. So. And, and now with the mobility and, and the cost of uh, building. It's but you don't think even in the winter when people take, I mean, Newport has it, but there's a huge change, I guess, yeah. and so forth. Yeah. Well, someday I think it, it will happen. Of course, the, there is the village inn across the street that mm -hmm. does some business in the, mm -hmm. in the winter. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, in 84, uh, 1988 was the uh, centennial of the town being a separate voting district, mm -hmm. and there was mm -hmm. a lot of activity in the town. As a result mm -hmm. of that, the Towers Committee was formed in 1989, and, and with that, there were fundraising events, because the, the interior of the building was still a mess. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, some repairs were made with the grant they had, and then in, by 1991, uh, this area that we're on, the third floor, the Great Hall, was opened up, and it was opened up by now Senator John Chafee, and it was the first event held in the building for 54 years. Uh -huh, that's amazing. Maybe now we should um, hear a little bit from Kate, and you could talk a little bit about the uh, restoration and the revival and the reopening and the interior and that kind of thing. We have about five minutes left. Okay. Well, I've just been thinking you, here for six years, but we, uh, we rented out for weddings and uh, parties, all kinds of celebrations. Last year we had a hundred events that we rented out during the year and uh, 44. It's very hard to get a wedding here unless you're called yeah, by music. <laughs> and uh, 44 public events. 
uh, we'd like to have the building used and, and people being able to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, and the ceiling, I'm looking around, well, I hope the camera three, catches shots of the ceiling, what they've done with the wood. When was that done? Three, what that three years ago, we put heat in the building and we... And, uh, and then put the balcony back. And actually, you could see my car vibrating because of the house. And uh, it's just a wonderful space, and I think it's the best dance floor. Maybe roads on the Patuxent. And you have, more, <laughs> you have more and more people coming to your dancing classes and your musical things, which we'll be talking about a little bit in our second you know, session right. that we see with Marie in the Towers. But also the... Is it cupola or cupola? How do you pronounce that? The cupola. Cupola. <laughs> the cupola either one. <laughs> is the um, plans of the cupola, and he actually built it on the ground beside the towers, so that, that people going by yeah. could see it and become a yeah, part of I it. I remember that. And Are you able to go up in there, or is it during construction we could? Oh. Okay. Um, and he he took all these shingles over to the Narragansett School, and the children wrote their names. <laughs> so the the cupola is accessible, maybe for a builder or someone who doesn't have a fear of heights. But it looks so nice from the outside, and we will have some outside shots of the uh, casino and the towers and so forth. You can see what it looks like. And so the Towers Committee also has galas, and you have um, charity functions and different things. Yes. Anything coming up? This will be aired in uh, June or July. I forgot what it's going to coming up this summer? Yes, we have a lot of different events. The, the final event will be something set in, in this period, mm -hmm. which is Mrs. Hannon's annual vi village ball. It was a party that Mrs. Hannon had every year for mm -hmm. Narragansett residents. Right, and you're going to be doing that every year, do you think? We do a gala every September, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and every four or five years we do a really big one. This oh, we can good. have 400 people in a tent outside. Mm -hmm. We're going to have an 18-piece band outside and a five-piece band inside, so you can go back and forth. And lots of people come to those. Yes. And do they dress up in the old sort so, of... Uh, some dress up and some don't, but... It's uh, it's a wonderful evening. It's September 25th this year. This year, and of course, this, this is aired in many places and at different times. You think that there probably will be something every year of that nature. Yes, mm -hmm. and we've had uh, a taste of the towers where the caterers that work here make an hors d'oeuvre or a dessert, and you can come and sample all the food and enjoy the ambiance wonderful, here. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I have so enjoyed being here, and I brought my grandmother's over tea service just to honor the occasion because it's from the period and probably kind of thing that people would have if they were having tea That's in the right. towers. And we um, certainly appreciated, John, all the research you've done and bringing all your knowledge to um, Tea with Marie and to other people to find out more about the towers and what happened here in Narragansett historically. Thank you for having me. It's so great to have you also, Kate. Thanks very much. And thank you for your dressing up in your lovely <laughs> outfit and, and for all fun. the work that you're doing here to recreate some of the activities of the towers and to bring the community together with with the events that you plan well thank you <laughs> and thank you also for joining us on tea with marie and um, i'm marie yunkin waltman reminding you always to keep beauty in your lives just as we've seen a lot of beauty today on tea with marie until next time